Right, we're back on this one. Um, it's absolutely belted down all weekend. Um, you've seen us finish Friday and it was raining. We haven't got Ager protectors, there's a shortage of it, so we're using the Ager Easy Peel. Um, and just to go to show you and all, um, it absolutely belted it down this weekend. Now, I've took the Easy Peel off there on just that part, and it's absolutely bone dry. There's the joints where they obviously the Easy Peel you know, doesn't go over and it's glued, but you can see there, look, the joints themselves are absolutely fine. Um, so this stuff's absolutely fine to use in rain and all. Obviously we'll get the walls up and we'll get some kind of covering on the roof because we don't want to leave it out too long because it hasn't got the same protection as, as the Eger Protect. So what's going to happen now, we're going to put the back wall up. Um, Jen's cut the timber there. So what will have to happen is that timber will be slightly longer than the wall. She'll cut two of them, we'll mark it out 400 centres and we'll build that wall and start to get that up in situ. So what's going to happen now, she's put the two base, um, the bottom plate and the top plate together. She's going to hook a tape on there, make sure both timbers are exactly the same. And then she's going to strike 400 centre lines along. Um, it's 400 centres. I mean, I know some people use 600 centres, but 400 centres is a lot stronger, a lot better. Um, and they... Uh, a quake to then so you'll have your plasterboard at 1.2 so you'll always have an upright where you joint your plasterboard is and then two more in the centre of your plasterboard as well so she'll go along there and um, we'll get the measurement for the uprights and we'll cut them and then we'll start nailing them together right so we're going to make the, the back wall frame it's 4 by 2 it's CLS um, Jen's already cut the bottom plate and the top plate she's also cut the uprights they're all the same the night what are they Adam 1975 that's our upright length That'll provide us with a building that is under 2.5 in height, which is permitted development. She's using the Pazlord IM350 Plus, and she's also using 90mm smooth nails inside as well. Um, so what she's going to do, she's going to put three nails in the bottom, three nails in the top. She'll work her way along. She'll make sure the timbers are flush. And then once that frame is built, we will then OSB it. Um, like I said, this Ager, it's not Ager Protect, but it's still got a protective coating. You can see the water there is just sat on the top, like it's got like a film on it even though we took the protective film on. Absolutely peed it down all weekend and there's no ridges, no water damage whatsoever. So Jen's gonna go along nail them. What I'll do then, I will start nailing the top for her and we'll meet at the end somewhere. When you're using a nail gun, you wanna keep your hand well away from the length of the nail and then if you misfire or it comes out and you hit a knot, then you ain't gonna nail your hand to the wood. Sorry? I'm getting my eyes lasered, so I'm not right bothered. <laughs> I don't think they can laser out a nail. Yeah. Uh, my glasses, Adam. I, I don't know. Um, don't say that, because you just get all the fucking... As head of health and safety, it's my duty. <laughs> right, do you want to go out in the van and get me some glasses then, please, I Adam? I will do. Right, are we going? Yeah. Right, this could go really wrong. Um, <laughs> Jen's, I've asked Jen to wear her glasses several times. She's bought these glasses. She got them off eBay, didn't you, Jen? They're Amazon. Like prop, off where? Amazon. Amazon. So you got them off Amazon. Other sites are available. Um, they're like proper CDT teachers' school glasses, although she does look quite secretarial in them. Put them on, let me see. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, the point of the matter is, I keep asking her to wear her glasses. Uh, she's not. I said the point, Lou. She said they're pointless and it won't stop them anyway. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to test the glasses and see if they will stop a 90mm nail or at least protect her eyes. So what we will do, if you can see there, look, there's Jen's eyes. Can you see your eyes? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And there's her hair. <laughs> right, so what we're going to do, <laughs> we're going we're gonna to fire. A 90mm nail straight at the lens and see what happens. Are you behind me? Yeah. Right, so, first one missed, second one went through her nose, the third one has took the lens out, but I heard it drop over here somewhere. Did you hear it drop again? Yeah. Right, just stop that till I find it. Right, so as I said, the first one missed completely. I shot that straight through there. The second one went through Jen's nose and straight into her iris, which obviously is not ideal, but that'll still be stuck in her nose, hopefully, at some point. Yeah. The third one made a direct hit on the glasses. It's took the lens out. The nail deflected elsewhere, but if you can see there, 
there's not a mark that scratch was already there there's not a mark on the lens so Jen to answer your question these will protect your eyes from Paslo's nails so can you please wear your glasses on site definitely thank you right I'm going to explain to you metric and imperial board sizes I know some of you can get boards that are 1.2 by 2.4 but these boards are not they're imperial so if Adam shows you We've got a four foot board, a plaster board's 1.2, so that's your imperial and that's your metric measurement. Um, the supplier that we get these off is still imperial and that's the way it'll be for quite some time, I think. Um, I don't know what the answer to behind that is, but I think that the machines that make these were built, they cost millions of pounds to replace, so why would they replace them? So that's left for us to adjust them. Right, what Jen's done, she set these out at 400 centres. I should. Yeah. yeah. Also, if these are milled up for other countries, That's true, yeah. They might even be coming from America, mate, aren't they? Right, we're going. Yeah. Okay, so Adam's just said a good point then and all. Um, Imperial, America's still running on Imperial and these boards may well have come from America. Right, Jen set these up. She set them up to 400 centres, which means our board will fall at 1.2, which is on that one there. That's 1.2. That'll plaster the board nicely, but the OSB will fly past it because it's a four-foot board. So what we're going to do, I'm going to set this saw up this is what we are. I'm going to set this saw up to cut 1.2. This saw then will constantly be left at 1.2. And what I'll do then, I will rip down the sheets. Right, so that board now is metric at 1.2. Um, obviously, the height is too big. Height-wise, what we want... We want the length of our wall. Um, I'm going to drop between imperial and metric because that's how I work. Right. Oh, shall I just say to millimeters? Mill, 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 mill I think we know the measurements in inches, though, don't we? I know, but some people... Right, I'll tell you in both of them. Right, our wall is just shy of 81 inches. It's 2,050. We want our OSB to fly past this and hang down. So when it's um, moisture barriered, any moisture that goes on it will run down the face of the building and onto the floor and not into the floor. So with that in mind, we are going to cut our OSB sheets at 84 inches, which will allow us to fly past. Um, right, let me just try and explain this to you now as well. I've cut that. That there is a machine cut and that's a machine cut. It's a right angle. Jen, will you just take that off there, please? So what we're going to do, we're going to flip that board and I'll explain why in a minute. No, we're not. We're going to flip it back. <laughs> right, that corner there, it's a right angle. So what I want to do is drop that corner on there. I'll fix it to that side and then we'll move this head of this frame up or down so that it's a right angle. And once we fix that first sheet at a right angle, when we go along and fix our other sheets, then the wall will be completely plumb that way, if that makes sense. So we need to determine which is the top and the bottom of the board. This is the machine cut, so that's going to be the top. What did I say? 84 inches. So I'm going to rip it down to 84 inches. It doesn't have to be the best cut. It doesn't have to be the best cut in the world because it's at the bottom and it don't matter. Um, 84 inches and what I'm also going to do and all I'm going to mark as 400 centres so this will be the right hand side and the reason why I mark them is for when we put this board down I can see where the timbers are for when Jen nails them she'll know where to nail them she'll make sure she's nailing into them so what I'll do now I'll finger scribe that up there um, probably should have gloves on because them little splinters just stick in your hands and one's gone straight up my nail already. Um, yeah. Right, so I'm going to mark them like that. So when that board goes down, which it will do in a minute, Jen knows exactly where to nail. She's going to nail it with the Pazlod IM350 Plus and she's going to use 63mm ring cut nails on that. That one's set to width of 1.2, isn't it? Right, so... I've set these to depth, take the finger off the trigger. It's just slightly going through, so I can leave that board on top of that one.
bought, I bought these at the weekend, uh, brushless, slight upgrade from the ones we originally had. Um, they're a proper little beast. I know a lot of you said get the rear handle one, but I don't really need it because we're literally just cutting sheets of material like this and it's not needed. Right, so we know that is a right angle over there. It's a machine right angle. It's been cut at the factory and I'm happy to use that as our first starting board. So what we'll do, Jen will get the nails on there. I've already loaded them with 60 freeze, Jen. That's what we... That's what, we've, that's what we've put in, 63 ring cut nails. Um, right, what we're gonna do now, Jen, if Adam comes a bit closer there, he'll see Jen get that corner dead, dead right at the top. Don't worry about that side, Jen. I'm trying Just, to pull it towards me. I'll push it for you. Thank you. Is your corner good? Perfect. Right, pop a nail in. So she's gonna pop a nail in that corner now which will now allow the sheet to move like that. If Adam looks down that line, what I'm trying to do now is get that machine edge right with that line, which it is now. Right, so that means that there is on line with that machine cut on the board, which is, means it's straight. So this one here, let, let me exaggerate it because it's fallen not bad. Right, can you see that there, Adam? Right, so that's a right angle. If we make this frame true to that right angle, that means the frame will be plumb. So what we need to do now is kick that frame down. Like that. And then we'll go across there. What we'll do then, we'll nail the rest of that frame. And when we put our next one in, we'll get the side right first, we'll nail that, and then Jen will do the same again. She'll tap that backwards and forwards, which will mean the sheet the sheets have kept the frame um, dead plumb for us, so when we stand that up, it'll be nice and it'll be right. Right, so what we're doing now, Jen's gonna get that corner. Is your corner good, Jen? Yeah? Right, no. get it right. I if I pull my end in, pull your end right, well that's fine. Get your top corner right, and I'll pull mine in once you've nailed it. Are you good? Yeah. Right, one minute. Right, so what I'm gonna do now, is exactly the same. I'm going up that line. Go on, no, 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 no. no, it's just, I'll explain that in a minute. Right, so it's the same as what we did with the, with the first one. We straighten that line there. <coughs> what we're going to do now <coughs> is get the top right. You see there, look, it's slightly out. There. Right. That can be nailed now. Yeah, yeah, got an angle, Jen, just so that. A bit more of an angle. Along that line there. So all we need to do now is cut the back piece, um, and then that's the back wall, fully our speed. Right, Jenny's put two sheets on, she's squared them up, we know that's right. When this one goes on, I couldn't imagine we're gonna have to square that, but we might do so. I've ripped down, um, the sheet to size what we want. Obviously the wall doesn't finish on a full sheet, so I've ripped it down. So what I'm gonna do is get this last one in. Um, can you see there, look, how I've put my 400 marks. So when Jenny nails that, she knows exactly where she's going. Um, it's a bit of a time saver, but what I've done, I've obviously forgotten that one there. <laughs> um, the reason why I forgot it is because I had to lean over the sheet so I couldn't quite reach it, because I'm a short ass. Um, so I'll just mark that for her as well. What can you see the mark on the bottom line, Adam? Yeah. Now the reason why that mark is there because I don't want Jenny to nail past that because if she nails past that, we will then have. Is that board right at the top, Jenny? We will then have um, nails sticking out under the bottom. Wait, wait, wait. Under the bottom of our frame which we don't want, when we sit the wall up, it'll sit on the nail and that'll be floating then. Right, I've freehand cut that, so Adam will see in a minute. What, what's happened here, look? The nails are a bit too close to the edge and it's just punched out the OSB. See that, Jen? Yeah. Right, so have you put one in corner? <laughs> so she's put one in corner, so you can see I've freehand cut that. It's not perfect, but it's more than sufficient. So Jen will go down there now, nail that. Um, it's off here though. 
Yeah, don't worry about that. Can you put your glasses on, please? Right. So, can you see there, look? So, I, I was wrong. I am going to have to make the frame um, move to suit. See there, it's running out. So, that means if we, if we stand that wall up as it is, the wall will run down in that corner. So, what we're going to do is, it's just bouncing. So, I'm going to go down to the bottom and move it for Jen. And then, when she tells me it's flush, she's going to pop a nail in there. Right, Jen. Uh, do I want to come to you? Yeah. One minute. Is that it? No. Yeah. A tiny bit more. Yeah. Right, Adam, come here. So she's nailed the long side, she's nailed the short side, and you can see there that frame's dead in line with that, which means the wall is perfectly parallel and square. So when that does stand up, it'll be lovely and square. Um, right, what we're going to do now, we're going to get some breather membrane on it. Shen's got there's a breathable membrane. Um, it allows the building to breathe, but it's also waterproof. So this side there is waterproof, and this side there allows the building to breathe. Um, she's going to put that down. That's the bottom of the wall. So we're going to start there at the bottom of the wall, which that makes sense. And then the top one will overlap the bottom. Any moisture will then run down the wall, but there won't be no moisture. Right, we're going to staple it to it. There's an overlap mark there, 150 mil. That's what you want your membrane to overlap it. We're letting it hang over the sides as well so that when we build our side walls, we can wrap it round. You good, Jen? Yeah. <laughs> right, um, what we normally have is a 1.5 roll and a metre roll and two stripes will do the wall. Um, but we've only brought two metre rolls. So what we're going to do with this... We're, you're going to what? Right, Adam, Adam picked up the wrong one, he says. Right, so we're just going to let this overfly. What we'd normally do is cut it down to width, but we won't on this occasion. Jen, do you want to staple it, please? Yeah. I can see you doing it with your feet though. Is it dead? No. Right. Okay. So, that's how to put your membrane on. We've cut the off, let it hang over a little bit. What we're going to do now is put some slate lats on. We're going to put our slate lats horizontally so that when we fix our vertical metal cladding, we've got fixing points all the way along every 400. So, Measure the wall, Jen. We'll cut some slate lats for it and then we'll get them fixed as well. And what space will you be putting them slate lats? I'll be, right, very good point, Adam. The slate lat at the bottom, I will bring up six inches, then I will space them 400. Uh, the top one will finish somewhere approximately there, but then we'll put another one there as well. And that will be enough, Adam. Any more questions, sir? Yeah, what was the reason for putting the one at the top? Um, good question. Because um, I like one at the top. Right, Jen, what have we got? One at the bottom. 3,300. Right, 3,300. So what I'm going to do, I know there's six that go on the back there, so I'll cut six there. That's at 3,300. And then Jen will load some 90s up into the gun, won't you, Jen? Are you filming still? Right, these slate lats, they're treated, they're literally roof battens. I don't know what you want. The terminology around the country all varies. Roof battens, battens, slate lats, tile battens. They're all the same, they're all treated. Two be one, roofs on. So what I'm gonna do, oh, I'm gonna get them on there. They do, they do come in different widths. Yeah, but I mean, you only need that width. Look, will you throw me a hammer, please, Jen? Thank you. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to get these all the same length so that I can cut them in one go. What do you say, Jen? 3.6? Will you measure it again, please? 
Brand new chop saw, leveled up. <laughs> Somebody asked on YouTube who, who was Murdoch and who was Beer Barackers. <laughs> Chat the way, Michael Jackson. <laughs> Yeah. Can you do any backflips, Jake? She can, she can dance. Let's see some dance moves. Hmm. What's it called? That, that right, what we're going to do, um, because we can't see our uprights, uh, they are at 400 centres, but what I'm going to do just to make life a little bit easier for Jen when she's nailing them, um, I'm going to mark where the timbers are on this slate pattern, and we can use that as a guide. <coughs> Right, so, Jen, take your foot off that. Jump down there with 63s, please, and nail gun. You should just leave this rolling all day. I know. Right, so what I'm going to do, hopefully Jen's got a tape measure in her hand, which I can see she has. Have you loaded both guns up with 63s? No, not no. both. No, just gone for one. I'll tell you what you do. Ignore, ignore me. You don't want 63s in it. Yeah. You want 90s yeah. in it. There you go. Take that. You'll learn to, You'll learn to read my mind one day, Jen. When you're trying to, he's telling you to put 100 screws in, nail gun. Right, Jen, jump down there. Down, down there. Right, what I'm going to do with my first baton, I'm going to bring it six inches off the bottom. Are you going to use a scraper? No, I'm just going to measure it. Jen, other way. What? Like that. Right, so we're six inches off the bottom there. What we're going to do now, I'm going to put this measuring stick there and then Jen knows exactly where she needs to nail. One minute, one minute, one minute, one minute. I can see when I were down there there's a bow in this timber so I'm just going to pull it to meet there. Whoa, 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 my finger. There please. No, no, there. Yeah, there. <laughs> Okay, so obviously this gauge I've made for measuring is, serves no purpose whatsoever. <laughs> Jen's just going to do her own thing. Right, Jen, go down, nail it up. What I'm going to do then is cut two 400 spacers. I was going to guess that then, Adam. You were going to guess 400? Yeah. <laughs> well, the fact of the matter is, if they're both the same measurement, it doesn't matter anyway, does it? Right. So, other saw. So I am going to in a minute, yeah. Other saws are available. This is the saw of choice that I much prefer to use. I've now got three of them bad boys. Um, right, 400 spaces. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to throw that over there to Jen. Sorry, Jen. I'm then going to put another slate lap there like that. Put the measuring gauge. Right, what Jen's going to do before she nails it, she's going to make sure that that slate lats to the end of there, because if it doesn't, we're flying over at the other side. Yeah, pull that to there, look. Yep. Again. She'll go to the end now and put her 400 spacer in there. Yeah. You good? Hold on. Push it to me, please. Get your spacer straight, look. That's yeah, it. Gonna... Are you there? Yes. <laughs> what? Yeah. Sorry. What do you mean you can't guess where they are? Right, 400 spacer, off we go, same again. You good? Right, 
Right, so just set that 400 spacer out of there, Jen. Right, that's your back wall now. It's ready for metal cladding, which we'll put up afterwards. Don't need to put it up now. So when that stands up now, if Adam just drops over this side here, Jen, if Adam looks under there, what we don't want is any nails sticking down because if we've got any nails sticking down, what we'll do then, we'll stop and hold the wall um, off the floor, which we don't want. It's looked good, Adam, yeah? It, it's looked good. Right, so we're just going to clean that off. What's going to happen now, Adam's going to film that. Me and Jenny are going to lift it because Jenny is strong like bull. But before we do, what I want to show you is... Right, so what I want to show you is these boots that we've come across. Oh, um, <laughs> these steel blue boots. So this is the choice of footwear for the A team. <laughs> As you can see, they've got zips on the side there, so you can take them on and off easily without undoing the laces. Very nice, aren't they? Yeah, they're beautiful. Yeah, Spurs and chaps coming next week. Um, I can only find leather arseless chaps, though. So. Right, are you ready? Out, you don't need to get up first. So you can, right, what, what I'm going to do is just lift it up and put it on my boat there, Jen. Put it on your steel toe cap. Put it on my blue steel. Yeah, put it on your blue steel. So that's the importance of having steel toe caps. She can't feel a thing. She's got the wall wind on it. Some gear bar, is it? Blue oh, steel. No, it's that um, the ice skating film. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What's he called? With Will Ferrell in it. Yeah, and he, and um, Owen Farrell. It's, Owen. it's it's him from um, Napoleon Dynamite, isn't it? No. No, it's got Owen Wilson. <laughs> That's it, yeah. Right, so what we're going to do now, if Adam looks at the end there, we can see the OSB which we want to fly down past. So me and General, how far off are we, Adam? Eight right, Jen. Just pick it up, watch your back, right, just slide it forwards, like that. Will that go now? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, if Adam looks now, so there's two of us got this wall, it's absolutely no issue at all to carry it or lift it up, is it, Jen? Yeah. Right, we're good, Adam. Yeah. So what we'll do now, Adam, Ad, wait, don't push it, no, don't push it yet. Adam, come in here. Come in here. Right, you can see now the... the, the yeah, yeah, just... You can see now, so the OSB is touching the floor. So what we're going to do now, we're just going to kick it forward and it'll drop there, which it has. Um, I'm just going to push it over to Jen. Right, if Adam comes here now, he'll see that there. Can you see now that the OSB now, I've just pushed it up there and it's touching, it's touching the floor, which is what we want. Jen, are you fractionally short on your frame length? Do you, you want me to come to you a bit? It's perfect. Right, okay, so if you can see the conifers actually pushing it over there. Well, have you got it, Jen? Yeah. So what's in the floor just to hold it? And then what I will do then is I'm going to get a timber then. I'm going to put it on the... If I, right, what, what I'd like to do is put a timber in the middle there, brace it off and push that back. But it's going to be in the way for building our frame. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fix that to the side. And then Jen's going to push that back. That's, that's about right there. A bit more to me. Do that all the way. There. And that'll just hold that frame against that conifers there. What we'll do, once we get the frame up and start on the roof, I'll jump up with the chainsaw and cut the conifers back. But basically, that is your back wall. We're going to screw it down to the floor. We're also going to nail it. What we're going to do then, we're going to create our side walls. Exactly the same scenario, but we're going to double batten the side walls as well. I'll show you that. There's a window to go on there. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut the window out afterwards, which I know a lot of you want to see, um, rather than build it in situ, which is slightly more complicated. But if you're going to build one of these at home, it's probably a lot easier to cut it out afterwards. So that's what we'll do. Bifold doors go in there. I'm out of breath. It's not good, is it? No stand, no stand on there. Uh, and windows, so I'll cut the window out afterwards. So what we're going to do, I'm going to screw and fix that. Jen, you want to get some 100mm screws? We'll screw that down. Um, and then we'll build the side walls. But once the side walls go up, because you've done the same with the OSB, you're going to have that rigidity going left and right like that. So when that goes up, it'll fix to that, and that'll hold that plumb, which means that timber can then come out. Um, so she's using these torque screws. They're 100 mil. You what? Where's, where's your drill? It's all right, I've got one of my... So, this is Jen's drill. 
barely used. Has it ever been used? Put that three times. Be a top put in there in a little pocket bag. Right, so. It's never been charged. Really? Yeah. <laughs> she's been here nine weeks and she's never used the drill once. <laughs> How comes? I've never needed it. I'll right. put it in raffle. Screw along there, um, double screw it, and I'll come back and nail it with you. So I don't know if you can see Adam, just come down here. Jen, yeah. just screw that, come down here. You see the frame there, it's slightly off the wall, off the floor because what's happening, the conifer's pushing it and it's not sit square. So just screw there and you should see that frame just pull down to the floor. There. there, did you see that pull down? So what she's going to do is put two in there and then I'm going to go by and nail it. Just want to show you these, Adam. Look, it's just where we've missed. It's not an issue. Um, I know a guy on the Facebook group who went because he'd missed these completely and they were there, but it doesn't matter because the insulation pushes back over and it covers it. Just watch when you push your insulation back that it's not shy of that and you put your hand through an nail in it, Adam. So that's your back wall built and fixed. Um, what it's. Do you, yeah, do you put insulation in there? Yeah. So. What, what we'll do over here, this, this one will go like that yeah. and then we'll put another timber in there and then that will get insulated in the back over there and this one where, where it's falling short like that there'll be another timber go over there but what we'll do we'll put insulation in that first before we fix I that wall because you, you won't get into it afterwards it's a very good point Jen but, no but we'll, we'll cut down some um, 100 mil I think there's some 50 mil outside and all yeah and we'll get it in so we'll, what we're going to do now Jen's going to measure the side wall and she's going to build the side wall aren't you Jen? Um, exactly the same as back, except we'll double batten this. Right, this is the side wall. And what I've done is Jen comes to this end. Motherfucker. Um, she'll see that I've made the board to... You alright? What are you done? I jolted my leg and... I don't know. If you can see down there, Jen, I've made the board too big. And the reason why I've made that board too big is... When we put this wall into place, I want the, that OSB that's too big to slide behind there so that we can fix to that side timber um, and that'll tie it all in. So, is that top corner right, Jen? Well, to me. More. More, 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 more. How do you like me? <laughs> A little bit more. More. Yeah. Right, so. We'll get one in there. Where do you put 63s? In here. Again, I've machine, I've hand cut that there. It's not the straightest, but it doesn't matter. Right, so the top there is right. You see that? So we make, again, we know when we put that wall up. I put that market right place. You are. See how many you got in I could I could hear it when it won't go in the right place. Could you hear it when it's firing through? Right, so I'm gonna just mark that line there because what we don't want is any nails sticking through the bottom, which will hold the wall off. So, that's your back wall, look, there's your side wall. If Jen looks down the side there, she'll see that timber there. What I want to do now is send the raw nails down there without, don't want anything in there because it'll impede that other wall. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to mark that there. I'm going to mark this one the same there as well. And when I nail that now, None of them nails will go through, and I'm just going to guess it. Is that filming? Yeah. 
No nailless? <laughs> no nailless. Right. So that's that's the side wall there, but this wall now, um, we're having hardy weatherboard on this, a VL board. Um, it's going to be horizontal, so with that in mind, we know if the boards are going that way, and our first row of lats want to go that way, sorry, our second row, so our first row of lats will go horizontal, then we'll put a row of vertical ones on, and then the vertical ones will carry the horizontal final cladding board. So we're going to put breathable membrane on this, we're going to get some double slate lats on it, and then we'll get it up into position, and I'll show you how we fix it into there and tie that up, because that wall is now square with the boards. When it sits up and it sits in position, it will hold that wall dead plumb as well, and then we'll fix that wall into the OSB and it through into the other frame there as well. Right, we've so back wall single batten, this wall double battened, reason being um, cladding is going horizontal there, and then you still got airflow, which can flow like that, whichever way it wants to flow. Um, we've allowed an overhang on there because what we want to do is slide it past that one and then fix to that one. This, when it goes up, should be plumb. Um, we haven't got a laser, have we? we haven't got a level either, have we? We've got a level, brilliant. Well, Adam's van's not being racked out, so we often forget loads of stuff, don't we? The simple stuff. The simple stuff for the simple people. Right, we're going to stand this up now, me and Jen. Um, I'm just going to pull it in a little bit of place where it wants to go. Right, we'll stand it up. Adam should be able to watch it slide into place then. We're good, Adam. Go. Oh, yeah. We're done. All right, that nail. Uh -huh. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> right. Adam, come here, mate. Right, Jen, have you got the wall? Right, just have a look over there. Right, you can see the OSB there. What we want that is there to fly behind that. We will then fix that timber into that and then fix that OSB into that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to push it there across at the bottom. Jen's going to hold it upright so you don't flip back over into the next doors. Right, yeah. right if Adam comes over here, we will see. You can see the OSB touching the bottom of the floor there. Um, what I'm going to do here, here, what I'm going to do here, because I can't tell if that OSB is tight, and what I mean by that is, you see that movement there, Adam, yeah, so what I'm trying to do is make sure that that timber is pulled all the way back, so that OSB hits that floor, and so what I've done, I've fixed that timber to there, and now I'm going to pull it there. You feel that? Jenny, you tight there? Very tight. Right, so again, a nice tight fit is what we're looking for. We've measured this to precision. There you go, look, Jen's measured that. You can't get more precise than that. Put a nail in there. Don't put a nail in there because it doesn't fit. <laughs> Take my timber off. Right, what can happen now is Jen's going to go around and screw that frame down to the floor. Um, I just want to show you something, Adam, if you can see it. No, you can't see it anymore. What? It doesn't matter. What you after, Jen? Yeah. Right, so, with that in mind, that's your back wall fit. Adam's now going to uh, go get a, a level. And what we're going to do, see that wall there, look, Adam, can you see that? That OSB, I don't know if you can hear it, listen that. There, that OSB is now banged against that, so we know that's right. What I'll do now is fix that through with there. Um, Jen, just put me a nail in that far. Screw. Sorry, just put a screw in and leave it out, sort of three inches. Right, what we're going to do is show you the difference between nailing it and screwing it. Adam's chuckling away there. Um, right. So, screw, nail. A nail will bend under pressure, whereas a screw should snap. The decent screw, so we'll see what happens. So, let's imagine you put two bits of timber together. They're under pressure. Um, this one's under pressure. It's screwed together with a screw. There. That snapped. 
two hits, three hits maybe, first one missed. Right, this one there is just going to keep bending until it gets warm and then friction will make it snap. There you go. So the, the, the nail, basically the nail lasts longer than the screw under pressure and that's why we're going to nail these rather than screw them. We'll put a few screws in the floor just to get it to pull down and then we're going to go back and nail it. I but, prefer to make love to them. <laughs> nail it, screw it or make love, it's up to you. <laughs> right, so what I'm going to do now is just fix that there. No, I'm not because there's no nails in the nail gun. Because the, the, the arm is down on it. Where's the hundreds? The 90s even? There's some here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to load the gun properly and then I'm going to nail that all the way down there. There's no risk then of that wall separating from that wall. Also the OSB, we're going to nail it through to that timber there. Jen's going to go down and screw these. I'm going to follow behind, nailing it. Um, they don't do ring cutting, that is what they do, but not for Paslos. Um, you what? Yeah, smooth, yeah. Uh, sometimes they're a different colour, sometimes they're gold. Because painting them gold makes them stronger. <laughs> right, turn it off. Right, just come over, I want to show you something. Right. Left wall, right wall. 3,230. Yeah? See that? 3,230. Got it? Yep. Right. Now, without editing, and I'll keep talking to you, no, we've not edited it and cut it out. We will now measure this side. And we have got 3,230. See that? So that means our building is square, our building is true, and using the string line and the big square like we did set out the base has worked absolutely spot on for us. So... It's the first time it's happened. <laughs> yeah, to be fair, we're normally about 40 or 50 mil out, but, you know, if we get it right, then we want to tell you about it. Warts and all, that's what we're all about, warts and all, aren't we, Adam? Right, so Jen's going to cut a top and a bottom head there. I'm not going to cut the window out. I'm just going to cut it out later and show you how we cut that out later at a later video. Um, that ain't going to come out of there. So what we're going to say, build packs. Build packs are available, 13 different sizes. www.awkwardgardenrooms.com What? Triple W. Triple W. That's all that. Oh, triple W. Triple W. Right, it's just the website. Just put Oakwood Garden Rooms, you'll see it. It comes up. Drop down menu, 13 different sizes, and £96. That's inclusive of VAT. Right, she's going to cut that. Father's Day. Yes, exactly. When's Father's Day? June. June. If you want to get your father or your brother or your granddad or even your mother or whatever, it's Father's Day, so it's an ideal present. <laughs> This woman in Little Tesco's, right? I'm not kidding you, right? She had some kind of voucher, right? And he went, you can't buy lottery tickets or since with voucher. And she went, oh, right. He went, so you've got a pound left? Do you know what she did? Right, there's six, seven people in queue. She went off around shop to look for something to buy for a pound. Right, it was driving me mad, oh. right? And I were there for ages, right? So I, I, I get out and I'm mad, right? And I get into the car and the bloke parked there. So I'm like, fuck's sake. And I stood there and I went, boom. And I opened it on my door and made. <laughs> I thought somebody had hit me in car park. <laughs> I was stood there like days, then I thought, what? <laughs> and then, right, I get in the car, and like, there's this blood gone. <laughs> that, and do you know what? It was my own fault, because I was angry with this woman who was trying to... This is what you get for losing your temper. Yeah, so the moral of the story is, go go to Tesco's. <laughs> cool. Yeah, if you're going to open your car door at any kind of fast rate, stand out the way. Is that, does that mean it's run out of gas? That's run out of gas. Do you know how to put that lid on? No. So when, it, when it's flashing, it's all right? Yeah. Right, that, that lid there is for travel, so it doesn't leak gas when it travels, right? See that? Yeah. Ooh. Right, now that there needs to push onto that. The easiest way yeah. to do that. OK. Do you know how to change the gas? No. Pull that up. No. Pop that out. There you go. 
put that one in there. Why don't you do a video on, on loading a password? Yeah. Tag password in it. Yeah. Okay. Yep. We've done the side wall, we've done the back wall. This is the side with the window in. I'll cut that out afterwards. We've let it overhang at the bottom. We've also let it overhang 95mm, which will fly the OSB past that timber. What we've done as well, we've put some insulation in there because I will not get into insulate afterwards. Jen had a premonition about that last night, even though we'd not built it. She thought it was a dream, but... She's a witch. <laughs> yeah, she's a witch. She's definitely casting spells. Right. Jen's going to grab it there, I'm going to grab it here and we're going to stand it up, aren't we Jen? Yes. Yes? There we go. <laughs> right, Adam, do you want to have a look on the outside there, see if you can see, I don't know if you can. You good? Yeah. Right Jen, you ready? Yeah. One, two, three. More, more. That's it. Adam, yeah. will you kick that bottom into me? Is that it? Are you in, Adam? I don't know. It felt like that there could more, maybe. Right, come, come in here. Yeah. Jen, will you um hold the wall from falling over, please? Right. Again. So, what we're going to do? We're going to make sure because we can't visually see it, and we'll give it a kick, and it looks like it's bouncing. We're going to try and pull that in, or make sure it is pulled in fully. There it is. You heard it, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Right, so with that in mind, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to put a nail in there. Jen's going to pull this one across. Oh, yeah. There, Adam, come here. You can see the OSB is practically on the floor there. There you go. Look. Right, so we're happy with that there. I'm going to fix that. Jen's going to go down and screw it now. And I'm going to follow behind and nail it. Over here, you can, yeah, over here you can hear that OSB hitting that wall, so we know we're good there. Obviously, I've insulated in that gap there because we would never have got it in to do it again. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to put some nails in the gun. Right, pass load. Pass load. We'll stop firing when it gets to the reload point there. There, look, you see how it stops now? Um, it's on that point there, it's on reload. So there's still a few nails left in it, but without putting more nails in, it won't fire. So what you need to do is just drag that back, it'll all lock on itself there. Drop your nails in that way, so when they go out, they go that way. Not that way, or that way. So they need to go in that way, point and angle. Drop them in, press that button, and away you go again. Right. Jen's going to screw that now, aren't you, Jen? Yeah. I'm going to pop this off. Yeah. You are. Someone's going to be cursing you that you've done that. Why? You've got to put insulation in there. No. What I'll do is I'll knock them over. <laughs> it's a bed of nails. Right, you see this look, Adam? Yeah. So I'm going to pull that across. I know there's a timber there. There we go. That's trapped that. I'm going to go down. That's fully nailed. I'll go along here now. Happy? Yeah. Right, so... That's your side walls up, that's your back wall. What we're going to do now, we're going to create the front wall. Front wall's a little bit different. We're going to make it out of 5x2, so it'll carry our steel, and I'll explain why it's out of 5x2 as well. No, what are you filming for? <laughs> um. This is what happens when off, off camera, the, the whirring of the old brain. You can probably hear it ticking. <laughs> Um, is that or the time bomb that is <laughs> That's, yeah, the time bomb that is me waiting to Explode. implode. Implode is probably a better word. Jen, would you like to have us? 
Right, we've built the front wall, we've used 5 by 2 for the simple reason we've put on this 80mm steel. When Adam cuts that 4 by 2 that will sit on there as well. We'll tech screw that through to there, we've tech screwed that up to there. We'll also fix the timber down to here and down to there, so that will tie them walls in with that steel. We are using, um, if I can find them, we're using these roofing screws to screw the steel. 110mm, uh, heavy duty. They'll screw straight into that steel without the need for a pile at all. Adam will now cut this and I'll show it going up. Um, the reason for this is two reasons really. Cut me another one as well please Adam. Right, so what will happen now, that will go on there like that. You can see that there. That timber equates to the thickness of that steel plus the thickness of that CLS. We've got one mil extra, which you're never going to notice. What I'm going to do, I'm going to fix that timber through to there as well. I'll then spike it through that. That'll tie the side walls in. I'll then tech screw that steel to that as well. And what Adam's going to do now, he's going to cut another one and we're going to rip it down to size. So when them roof joists go on there, we've then got a fixing point and we'll put down upside joist hangers to fix to that, which will then tie the roof to the steel beam. The steel beam then will create the perfect opening. Our doors are 1950 high, including the sill. The opening there is 1960. It will not deviate against that because that steel is more than sufficient to carry that load of that roof. Therefore, we have no load bearing down on the bifold doors, which will mean they will glide as they should do. Perfect one thing.